location of this episode uh, occurs in northern uh, Rocky Mountains in Montana, in the crazy mountains. <laughs> the mountains up there are just crazy. So uh, this one's going to be a little weird. I almost felt like I forgot the whole format of the show because I know we're live. Yeah, it's I'm like, throwing me off. <laughs> this is throwing me off, too. Uh, I apologize to everyone listening. It's not going to be as smooth as the other ones. I can just feel it right now. So I'm, I'm giving you a heads up already. <laughs> uh, if you want to hear normal shows, listen to some of the other ones. And Joe, keep your mouth very close to the I'm microphone. I'm going to try and remember that. Because <laughs> I like teased one of our listeners for not getting the audio right. And then some other guys like, I'm a professional. You're, you're wrong. So I have to apologize now to whoever I yelled at. Anyway, so we're going to talk a little bit about the crazy mountains real quick. couple facts, uh, talk about the area, and then we'll get into the uh, profile of the individual that's missing, and then Mike will go through the timeline. So the crazy, crazy mountains suffer from split management and lack of coordination between two national forests, the Custer Gallatin and the Helena Lewis Clark. There are also many private land sections in the range, making it difficult for management and a roadless area proliferated by inholdings. I don't know what any of that means. That's all from so, uh, that's all from Wikipedia, right? Uh, well, so this is common. Uh, a lot of the national forests in northern Wisconsin have um, areas where there's private land ownership, like in the middle of the national forest. And uh, so this area of Montana has a lot of private ownership, which makes the part this part of the state very inaccessible because you're not supposed to trespass. And to get to some of these spots in the crazy mountains, you have to go through private land. So okay. Because it does say in 1935, they reported the national park wouldn't be feasible to like have one there because half of the land, every alternate section is owned by the Northern Pacific Railroad Road or is in private hands. So there's too many small patches of privately owned area to make it one big national park. Was that kind of the idea? Yeah. And they're actually, they've been working on, they do uh, like land swaps where they will take chunk squares of land uh, in the area and try to take that over by the federal government and they swap it out and give the private owners land in another part of the area to try to Huge make it more tracks of land. Yeah. <laughs> so Robin Hood men in tights, right? Oh no, that's not Robin Hood men in tights. That's uh Holy grail. Monty I, Python. I don't even Huge know what you're talking about. Tracks of land. <laughs> anyway. All right. So the name crazy mountains is said to be shorthand from the crazy woman mountains given them in a uh, compliment of their original crow name after a woman who went insane and lived in them after her family was killed in the westward settlement movement all right so like one lady went crazy because her whole family was killed and named the whole mountain range after her yeah the native american uh native americans kind of originally settled this area so a lot go. of a lot of the history involves the uh, uh the native americans that go by the um i think I can't pronounce that. Oxopi? Oxopi Pi? Yeah. The, the Crow people call the mountains Oxopi Pi, roughly translated as ominous mountains, or even rougher and less accurately, the crazy mountains. <laughs> so it comes from the Crow people. Uh, they were famous to the Crow people for having metaphysical powers and being unpredictable, a place used for vision quests. So they would go up in the crazy mountains for vision quests. So <clears throat> probably using some sort of... Uh, opium or whatever hallucinogenics. Yeah, hallucinogenics. Yeah. Uh, the crazies are significant to the native american culture in 1847 chief plenty coop a great chief of the crow nation climbed crazy peak to seek a vision so he might properly lead and guide his people the range's numerous isolated basins offer some of the most productive mountain goat habitat in the state sustaining a population of approximately 450 goats with mountain goat population numbers dropping throughout the species native range in the United States and Canada, Montana Fish and Wildlife Parks considered the crazies as essential for the survival of the species. So the crazy mountains are almost completely surrounded by private lands, making access into the mountains somewhat difficult, as we said before, especially in the southern section where the highest peaks are located. Ancient Rocky Mountain locusts and extinct species of, in of insects are frozen in some of the glaciers. The mummified remains of mammoth hunter's child from 12,000 years ago were discovered at the foot of the range in Shields Valley. I actually read about that. Did you really? I think so. I remember reading about, um, it might've been a different guy. No, it was somebody else. It was like the oldest preserved body they ever found. It was okay. like cro magnum man is, ah, I can't even say it now. <clears throat> but I, I, I've heard about that one too. Yeah. I, I've been uh, to Montana so many times. I always read up on... The different I didn't I didn't going. know about either of those things. Um, that, I mean, that's pretty interesting about the Rocky Mountain locusts. And I had no clue about 
a 12,000 year old mummy being found in the, the foot of that mountain. So yeah, mammoth hunters child. So it must've been a small child. Yeah. That's crazy. All right. So we'll get into the climb into the area just to go over, uh, get an idea of what this uh, missing person was dealing with. So the average temp when he went missing would have been in the upper 60s during the day and the lower 40s at night. So not too bad. And obviously at higher elevations, it's going to be colder because some yeah. of the peaks, a lot of the peaks in this area are over 10,000 feet. So okay. um, it's going to be colder at that elevation. So Montana has a northern Pacific coastal climate with cool summers and mild winters in the western part of the state, while the eastern part separated by the continental divide uh, experiences a semi-arid continental type climate. Uh, the Copen climate classification with warm summers and cold winters. So it's it's similar to when we went. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. It was kind of like air. You know, well, arid. Yeah, I, I don't know good. where I would have hiked in Montana when um, we did our loop. That was north. That was that more, was northeast. That was like Idaho, though. No, that was Montana oh. Glacier National Park. Oh. It's yeah, Montana. I, I guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like in the, the northeastern part. So we're, if you look at the mountain range, it, we are on the left or the right side. Yeah. Basically. But it's still almost center. What like is that? Right squeaking? center. I keep hearing. That's my chair. Oh. Just ignore it. I'll try and, I'll try and move less. Uh, due to the eastern location, these mountains are drier and less densely forested than other mountain ranges in Montana. So this has the same kind of effect we've talked in other episodes with. Uh, locations on the eastern range of a mountain. I don't know what you called it. You kind of call it like a rain shield or what? Rain shadow. Rain shadow. So obviously, it's like greener think, on the other side. Think and... about like Oregon in Seattle, in Washington State. So on the the Pacific side of that range, it's like a they call a temperate rainforest. And then on the eastern side of the Cascades in Washington and Oregon, it's very arid and desert like. Uh, from all the pictures I looked at. This is this a similar kind of climate um, in this region of Montana. So uh, pretty dry, arid, not a ton of vegetation. Yeah, when you're when you're going through the story, I'm yeah. gonna try and pull up Google Earth and see if I can share it. Okay. On the stream, <laughs> I'll try and get a oh little boy. crazy with it. Oh man. Yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, so the range spans over 40 miles and covers more than 600 square miles in total. The highest peak is Crazy Peak at over 11,214 feet with 25 pinnacles soaring to more than 10,000 feet. So they are the third highest range in the state. Which is kind of funny. That sounds wild, and that's only the third highest in Montana. So yeah. there's a lot of alpine environments. Montana is just the best. It, it's pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to jump forward to the uh, possible dangers. So the types of animals that are there, uh, it's a gnarly place. I remember there's a lot of stuff we had to go through when we backcountry hiked in, in glaciers. So there's black bears, yeah, mountain lions, mountain goats, wolverines. Uh, large herds of elk, moose. Um, although grizzly bears are not known to be present in this range, gr grizzly bears and other wildlife travel uh, through Yellowstone and Glacier uh, that could potentially go that way. So I know we ran into some grizzlies when we were in Glacier. Uh, I didn't know they didn't make it over there officially. Well, yeah, from what I read is the, uh, the grizzlies will sometimes move between those two parks and they actually use the Crazy Mountain area as kind of like a, a path in between them. So they don't live in that range, but it's just a freeway. Just, it's a freeway of bears just passing through town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the terrain is very rugged. Uh, there's numerous vertical slopes, uh, barren windswept ridges. That is totally true everywhere. Yeah. I just, that's all I recall. Like when you think of a garden wall, yeah. just a giant sloping edge of a mountain. It's beautiful because it's covered in flowers. Um, but that, that it's one of my most favorite states to go to for hiking. It just yeah. takes so long to get there. No, Glacier was a lot of fun. I this this crazy mountain range area sounds fun to hike. So someday I'd yep. like to get back there. And it was just so much farther to get to the other side. I'd like to hike from like <laughs> Yellowstone. Uh, actually, I you know we start in the Tetons, hit Yellowstone, hit the crazy mountains, and end in Glacier. You right. do it in like three months. I put in I put in for <laughs> permits to Tetons. No, did you? I did. I'll let you know if I get them. Okay, we'll have to, we'll have to go do a show there. Yeah. Uh, so exposure issues. Uh, the northern flanks of Crazy Mountain are gentler, and the vegetation is more lush, so there's a little bit more cover yeah. than the uh, rocky, precipitous southern reaches. So we definitely would want to be on the more lush side. Yes. Um, and there's just always the potential for extreme weather at higher elevations. So storms rolling in the afternoons, if you're exposed in general, not a good spot to be at. Yeah, extreme weather can happen in these types of environments. I know when I was doing the research for this uh, case, there's actually an avalanche warning not too far from here, not in the crazy mountain range, but 
just west, like probably 20 miles. So it can get gnarly. It can get pretty bad. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, anyone who's hiked in alpine environments knows to keep an eye in the sky. So it's difficult hiking in general. Scattered private land ownership, the rugged terrain, remote location. It's not somewhere you go car camp with the kids. It's you need to know what you're doing. You got to have the right gear. You got, you got to know the area yeah. preferably or just be very cognizant of what you're doing. Yeah, most people probably aren't going to come hike here. You know, it's there's so many cool parks around here. So you've got, like we said, Glacier, Grand Tetons, um, Yellowstone. I mean, those are all parks you should probably visit first um, if you're hiking. It's like the locals get away when they're like sick of all yeah. the places they go to all the time. Yeah. Can it, you imagine getting sick of Glacier? Right. <laughs> what a what a first.